वेलकम टू आई फोर इंस्टीट्यूट आई एम खुशबू वर्किंग एज डॉट नेट सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपर इन आई फोर टेक्नोलैब प्राइवेट लिमिटेड दिस सीरीज इज अबाउट डॉट नेट फ्रेम इन लास्ट सेशन आई डिस्कस अबाउट एम वी सी वेब ए पी आई इन दिस सेशन आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट एंटिटी फ्रेम वर्क इन दिस सेशन आई एम गोइंग टू कवर अप फॉलोइंग पॉइंट एंटिटी फ्रेम वर्क एंटिटी फ्रेम वर्क अप्रोचेस कोड फर्स्ट डेटाबेस फर्स्ट मॉडल फर्स्ट एंटिटी रिलेशनशिप वन टू वन रिलेशनशिप वन टू मैनी रिलेशनशिप मैनी टू मैनी रिलेशनशिप रिपोजिटरी पैटर्न इन एम वी सी एंड क्रिएटिंग रिपोजिटरी हाउ टू यूज रिपोजिटरी नाउ लेट स्टार्ट विथ एंटिटी फ्रेमवर्क सो वॉट इज एंटिटी फ्रेमवर्क Entity framework has provided by Microsoft for automate database related activities in application. Entity framework is an object relational mapping that is ORM framework. Now from this again the new question arises is what is ORM? So the ORM is an enhancement to ADO.net that gives developer an automated mechanism for accessing and storing the data in the database. Writing and managing ADO.NET code for data access is a tedious and monotonous job. So Microsoft provided ORM framework called Entity Framework to automate database related activities for application. ORM framework that enables to work with relational data as domain specific objects, eliminating the need for most of the data access plumbing code that developer usually need to write. Using the entity framework, developers issue queries using link queue, then retrieve and manipulate data as strongly typed object. The entity framework's ORM implementation provides services like change tracking, identity resolution, lazy loading, and query translation. Now, what are the entity framework approaches? There are three approaches. That is a code first. database first and model first so it is a mature orm from microsoft and can be used with a wide variety of databases three approaches are code first database first and model first now let's see the code first entity framework introduced code first approach from entity framework 4.1 code first is mainly useful in domain driven design it helps us to create the entities in your application by focusing on the domain requirement once entity have defined have been defined and configuration specified it create the database it gives more control over the code don't need to work with auto generated code anymore if domain classes are ready then create database from the domain classes here you can see and uh, diagram for code for that is domain classes entity framework and database so what will happen domain class if domain classes are ready then it will automatically create database from domain classes that is a code first approach so you don't need to first create a database then the domain classes it will directly create the database for your domain classes so you can see that Uh, within the code first approach you can focus on domain design and start creating classes as per your domain requirement rather than designing your database first and then create the classes which match your database design so this is a basically advantage of using code first the downside to this approach is that any changes to underlying database schema would be lost in this approach code defines and creates the database this approach allows to use entity framework and define the entity model since then the designer or xml files use the poco that is plain odd clr objects approach to define the model and generate the database in this approach create the entity classes here's an example a typical entity class is given below you can see here public class product in that there are three properties that is product id product name and price so in database it will directly create a table 
um, by name product and it has a three column that is product ID, product name and price. Product ID will have a data type integer, product name ha have data type string and price will have data type float. So you can see say that code first approaches are used if you already have an existing application with domain classes then you can use the code first approach because you can create database from your existing classes. Next define a custom data context by extending the DB context class as shown below. So how to do the connectivity. So here you can see you have to made a DB context class which is inheriting from db context class and what you have to do is inside that you have to do a db set or uh, name of your class and object of the class so it will just redirect it will just connect your class to its to uh, specify the connection string in configuration file this is a very important part for a code first approach now let me show you an example for creating a code first approach you know how to create an mvc application so i just created an mvc application for you now first first of all you have what you have to do is in web config file you have to do uh, give a connection string here you have to give a name of the context class like i will show you this later but first of all add connection string here now in model what you have to do is i just created a model that that have a class blog now blog have two parameters that is a blog id and name it will have a so in my db there is a class uh, there will be a table blog which have two columns that is blog id integer and name string now what i am to do is i have to add db context class for db connection so i have created a folder that is context in that i created a class block context class what i have done is i created a block context class and this i give the reference of this block context class to my web config file in connection string add name is a block context so it will be connected to this inheriting a db context class now here you can see in that i just created an object for blog that is a class which i already created having a two properties blog id and name and it will have blog so it is just a simple connection now in the in database if it if there is a no table for a blog then it will directly create a table blog with two columns id and name now in my controller i just created a controller that is a block controller inside that what i am doing is i'm just uh, giving ref uh, just making object of block context class here you can see i just created a object db for a block context class now what will happen in index when i will call this index method it will just return me a list of block that is number of data stored in the uh, database for this um, block table now second is order by name this will return me a link you query you can see here from b in db dot blocks order by b dot name so in blocks there is a name column so it will be ordered by a name column ascending and select b similarly if you want to get a detail by id then what will happen you have to create a just an object of a block and find that id so if we, if blog have any obj any uh, object uh, returns any object for this particular id then it will return a view for that blog or else it will fire the http not found error similarly if you want to create a blog then you can create the blog by adding uh, and by using add method for creating the blog and db.save changes will save the data in your database Similarly, if you want to edit it by ID, then what you have to do is you have to just uh, when it is HTTP get, then you have to just uh, get the ID, find the find the block by ID, and return to its view. Now, when it is posting, you have to do this like like this bind include. What you want to include is two two columns that is a block ID and name and the object blog. So if model state dot it is valid, if the model is valid, it has a, a correct data for blog ID and, na and the name, then it will go inside that 
state will be modified as well when the state will be modified the modified blog object will be updated in your db and it will redirect to action inlet now let me show you and view here you can see in that blog i have created and view for index here you can see there is an uh, uh, index view in index it is returning a list to me so what i have done is i am just done a for loop of a uh, list and just displaying the data similarly you can see i have created a view for create method that is for to insert method so what i have done is i just get a model that is model object and i am just validating the model model object and i'm just binding the models to control and passing the values to controller on submit of it it will just post to the create post method with the object blog similarly you can see i created a detail class in detail class there will be always a one object because i i have a detail by id so it will have only a one row so what i have done is i just displayed it to the uh, display it to my html view that is model dot name now again you can see i created a edit view here so edit will have a view by id so what will happen i just i i will just display this model dot name that is only a single because i want to edit this block block name but i want to edit with by id so i have just taken a hidden field for my id so when i will post then this id will be posted and by this id particular row is updated in my db now let me run this application here you can see i just run blog or controller in that index method so it have a two data that is blog 1 and blog 2 now i want to create a new one so i will create a new it will redirect to create view now i am just writing blog 3 and save so it will pass http post and blog 3 as an object now what i want to do is i want to edit this blog 3 what i am do i am just blog name 3 and i'm just saving you can see here blog edit 5 so 5 is the id of this blog so it will update by this id where id equal to 5 now i'm saving this you can see it is renamed by blog name 3 now i want to get a detail so what i do is i will click on detail so it will just display me the name and the detail of that blog i'm going to list again now suppose i want to delete this so here you can see it will delete by id that is 5 so it, it is asking me are you sure you want to delete if will if i will click on delete it will delete by that id here you can see only two records were left now what i want is order by name so i am clicking on this it is order by name here by default it is 1 and 2 now let me edit this name blog 1 i'm saving this here you can see i'm clicking on order by name so it will be ordered by name this is just an example of an entity framework code first now second approach is database first so what is database first in database first we have a existing database and we created the context and entity class from an existing database so let me uh, show you use the database first approach if the database is already designed and is ready in this approach the entity data model that is edm is created from the underlying database as an example use the database first approach when generating the edmx files in the visual studio ide from the database manual changes to the database is possible easily and always update the edm if need if needed for example if the schema of underlying database changes 
To do this, simply update the EDM from the database in Visual Studio IDE. Here you can see and database first approach. So you have to first create a database. On basis of database, you have to just create your context and entity classes. This is a main point in a database first approach. So please remember uh, for database first approach, you have to create a database first. Now to remember point is to change if you do any changes in, in your database you do not you have to not forget forget to update the EDM file. Now let me show you how to create a database first MVC web application. So what you have to do is go to file open a new project. Now you what you want to create is ASP.NET web application. Rename your web application. Suppose MVC DB first. Now I'm clicking on OK. So it will ask me a MVC. So I will go for MVC. Now clicking on OK. So MVC web application is created. Now what I want to do is I want to connect my database table to this web application. So I want to create a uh, domain class. So what will I do is I will do a right click on models. Add new item. In that go to data adio.net entity data model. Now I, I will just rename it whatever you want to keep. Suppose I want to do is employee. So I will add this file. Now it will ask me uh, what should the model contain. So I will choose EF designer from database clicking on next. So it will uh, ask me which data connection. So you have to do is new connection. Now in new connection you have to do is SQL server and continue. Here you can see there is a server name. So add the name of your server name. Then authentication if it is a window at authentication then it's okay. If it is a SQL server authentication then give a username and password. After doing this, it will ask a connect to a database. So in this, select or enter a database name. You have to just enter your database name and you have to do is OK. I already created this EDMX file. So let me show you directly there. Here you can see I created a EDMX file. Like I show shown how to create and it it created an EDMX file for class a table employee having employee ID name salary address and department ID. Now let me show you in database the table employee here in database test one there is a table employee in table employee there is a columns that is employee ID name salary address and department ID. So on basis of this structure, by default, it created a EDMX file for database first approach. Now this is a database first approach. So model is directly created. Model is directly created. Now in my web config file, you can see I create it created a database name that is Kushbu entities with the connection string that is my uh, connection string to EDMX file. So in controller, you can see in employee controller, you can see here I just created a object for entity that is object for DB context for connecting the DB. But and all the features or all the uh, methods for index that is getting a list, getting a detail by ID, editing detail by ID, creating uh, creating a new and a new row in database editing uh, existing row is the same as in code first approach here you can see for 
getting a detail i just written a uh, getting a list i just written dd.employees.toolist so let me go to view of this file this method you can see here there is a view that is index view i am what i have done is for each model i am just doing for each loop similarly second method is detail method so in detail method it will just give me a detail let me go to the view of detail you can see here it will just display the detail of that i uh, that uh, row by id now next one is create so while creating in get there is only a view with no data binding it will just display labels and text box when i will click on button submit it will it will call create http post method so it will call this method in this method i what i want to do is i want to bind bind what i want to bind employee id name salary address department id which are the columns of or you can say which are the properties of class employee now if model dot state is valid then it will add employee and it will save changes to db similarly while if you are going for edit then in get method it will just display you the detail of existing row with id it will just display the existing row with id so it will bind to your model now if i change the my existing row if i change this then during a post it will just save the changes similarly for delete it will get by id then in post it will delete that particular row find that id and it will just remove that row by dot remove method and it will change the on uh, changes in my database now let me run this here you can see in employees index there is a list of employee it has a three rows that is uh, one is khushboo second is kinjal and third one is riya now i want to add a new one so i am going to create new it will redirect to employees that create now what i am doing is i am just typing the id name let me say john salary let me say 6000 address india department id let me say 3 now i am creating it so it will be created a new row in my db you can see here now what i want to do is i'm just want to see a detail so i am going to detail it will it will give me a detail of that particular row that is by id so by id the id of this uh, name john have 6 so it will give me all the detail by id 6 i'm going back to list now what i want to do is i want to edit the detail so i will go to edit it will bind the current data to this of fields now i want to change the salary suppose i want to change the salary to 10000 now i am just saving it so it will save 10000 update row on uh, updates this row and uh, salary column with 10000 in my db suppose now i want to delete the record so i am just clicking on delete by id 6 it will delete the current record you can see here id 6 is binded to this url so by this id it will delete the record so i am just clicking on delete it deleted the record and displayed uh, in display also that row is removed so this is a simple approach or simple way for using database first approach now last one is model first in model first approach key create the edm first then generate the database from it create an empty edm using the entity data model wizard in visual studio define the entities and their relationship in visual studio then generate the database from this defined model create entities and define their relationship and association in designer in visual studio 
specify the key property and data types for the properties for entities using the designer. Use partial classes to implement additional features in entities. In the code first approach, in mid, a model first approach, manual changes to database would be lost as the model defines the database. Here you can see create database and classes from DB model design. So what will happen according to a DB model classes will be defined and then the database. Next one is entity relationships. Entity framework support three types of relationships same as the database that is one to one, one to many and many to many relationship. Here you can see there is an example. Uh, there are table that is standard teacher student address student and course you can see there is a one to many relationship between a student teacher and standard you can see one to one relationship between a student address and student one to many relationship between a teacher and course and many to many relationship between student and courses now let's move to one to one relationship so one to one relationship is a type of cardinality that refers to the relationship between two entities A and B in which one element of A may only be linked to one element of B or one element of B only linked to one element of A. As per relationship figure which is shown in uh, before slide student and student address have one to one relationship that is zero or one. So a student can have only a one or zero address. Entity framework adds student navigation property into student address entity and student address navigation entity into student entity. Also student address entity has student ID property as primary key which makes it a one to one relationship. Student entity class includes student address navigation property and student address includes student navigation property with foreign key property student ID. This way EF handles one to one relationship between entity. So you can see say student have a foreign key of student address and student address have student ID. Example you can see here. There is a public partial class student. In that, there is a constructor public student. Now, what, what you have done is, you can see here, there is a public properties that is student ID, student name, standard ID, and row version. Now, what you have, what you have done is, you created a virtual standard. So, it is a, giving a relationship between a student and student standard. Student address, that is virtual student address and I collection that is course. In public partial class student address there are following fields that is student ID address 1 address 2 city state. Next one is one to many relationship. One to many relationship is a type of cardinality that refers to the relationship between two entities A and B in which an element of A may be linked to many elements of B. But a member of B is linked to only one element of A. This is an one to many relationship. The standard and teachers entities have a one to many relationship marked by multiplicity where one is for one and star is for many. This means that standard can have many teachers whereas teacher can associate it with only one standard. To represent this, the standard entity has a collection navigation property teacher. Please noted, notice that it's a plural which indicates that one standard can have a collection of teachers that is many teachers. And a teacher entity has a standard navigation property that is not a collection which indicates that teacher is associated with one standard. Also it contains a standard ID foreign key. This makes it one to many relationship. You can see here an example public partial class standard. Public partial class standard. You can see here an example public partial class standard in that 
there is an constructor standard now in that after that you can see there is a virtual collection of students as well as teachers now what is there in teacher you can see in teacher there is a virtual collection of a courses and virtual collection of a standard now many to many relationship many to many relationship is a type of cardinality that refers to the relationship between two entities a and b in which a may contain a parent instance for which there are many children in b and vice versa student and course have a many to many relationship marked by a strict multiplicity it means one student can enroll for many courses and also one course can be taught to many students the database design includes student course joining table which includes the primary key of both the table that is student and course table entity framework represents many to many relationship by not having entity set for the joining the table in csdl instead it manages this through mapping here you can see an example public class student have virtual standard virtual collection of courses and virtual student standard and in courses there is a public uh, uh, integer id course id and you can see virtual collection of teacher as well as virtual collection of students so this is many to many relationship next one is repository pattern in mbc so first of all what is repository it creates a data access login in separate class to set of classes with the responsibility of persisting application business model it's called repository repository pattern is a layer between a data access layer and business logic layer in application the repository pattern is intended to create an abstraction layer between the data access layer and the business logic layer of the application data access pattern that prompts a more loosely coupled approach approach to data access create the data access logic in a separate class or set of classes called a repository with the responsibility of persisting the application's business model mvc controllers interact with repositories to load and persist an application business model by taking advantage of dependency injection that is di repository can be injected into controllers constructor what are the benefits that is centralized the data logic or web service access logic reduce the reduction redundancy of code faster development and provides a flexible architecture that can be adapted as the overall designs of application evolve so these are the benefits but there are some of the problem rise if an application does not follow the repository for pattern so what are the problem rise if an application does not follow repository pattern are it duplicate the database operation code need of ui to unit test database operation and business logic need of external dependencies to unit test business logic and difficult to implement database caching so how to create a repository step 1 open up your existing mvc application in visual studio that we created in third part to interact with database with the help of entity framework second create a folder named repository and add an interface to that folder named i i i employee repository this interface will derive from i disposable type of interface we will declare methods for crude operations on user entity class over here choose the name of the method as per choice but those should be easy to understand and follow here you can see interface i employee repository which is inherited from from i disposable so it has a following method that is get employee insert employee update employee delete employee and save employee now step 3 extract a class from that interface and call it employee repository this employee repository class will implement all the methods of that interface but with the help of entity framework now here comes to use of our db context class that is mvc entities we already have this class in our existing solution so we don't have to touch this class simply write our business logic in the interface method implemented in employee repository class
so here you can see in public class employee repository i just inherited the interface i employee repository and i just added my logic to all the method that is get employees get employees by id insert employee update employee delete employee and save employee get employee will list get the list of all the employees get employee by id will give the list and find that employee by id insert employee use add method update employee will use entity state dot modified which is a method of entity framework delete employee will use same it will first find the employee by id then it will delete remove it will remove that user by id and it will save the changes now next one is save to save the changes now how to use repository step 4 go to the controller declare i employee repository reference and in the constructor initialize the object with employee repository class passing db context that is repository context to the constructor as the parameter we define in employee repository class you can here see in my con employee controller you can see i just created an object for i employee repository and inside that uh, inside that i created a public employee const controller that is a constructor and i just initialized that employee repository and created object of repository context how to do could crude operations using repository if you want to get all employees then you have to just in your index method you have to just call uh, call the method get employees with the uh, object of em uh, employee repository similarly to get a single employee detail you have to call get employee by id then you have to just assign the values to that uh, the models entities next one is insert employee in that you have to do is in in that you have to do is insert employee by uh, using insert employee method you can see here you uh, what you have to do is you have to just create an object for employee repository and just call uh, insert employee and pass the object of the model similarly to update employee you have to call uh, update employee method and just pass your object to that uh, update employee method for deleting method uh, deleting employee you have to first get the employee by id then remove it by using delete employee for references you can use tutorialspoint.com entity framework entity framework tutorial.net and entity framework tutorial.net so let's end the session thank you for watching